tell you, this is supposed to be a food forest. Um, right now, this is, this is the apple tree deal here. Um, but we're doing polyculture and companion planting. So, what we have planted around there right now is basically just chives and onions. Um, it keeps the animal away from your trees. So, this one is just an experiment of doing it on the ground rather than up in these mounds. So, what these mounds are, are called Hugo cultures. Um, from a guy named Sepp Holzer, he's in Austria. So what you don't see is two feet down and the whole length of these Hugo cultures with logs about the size of those logs over there. And, um, and then branches are packed in, mud is packed in, leaves are packed in, as many worms as we found are packed in. So it is becoming a huge, essentially, compost pile. Um, after that, we layered it with the dirt from the trenches that we dug and the clay. Um, and then we started building on it. So right here, you can kind of see this is the clay, right. the clay layer. Then we have the black layer, which is the compost layer. We have a leaf layer, and we have a mulch layer. So we're laying them all up. These branches are just to hold things in place. And they're going to break down in about a year also. So um, that's the structure itself. The reason why this structure is really awesome is, see that guy's watering? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, this year is really important to water a lot. And all the water that you get and collect is going to go in into the logs, which is placed in the middle. So what that does is it, it acts as a sponge. It's going to collect and hold all that water until the plants or the soil say we need more water and it's going to break down and release some of that water. And the plants will reach their roots, bushes, plants, whatever you have in there. They'll reach their roots down and, and they'll start sucking like a straw the moisture out of the heat. Um, I want to tell you about polyculture because that is another take you to this one over here. <laughs> okay. This don't be corny away. Oh yeah, that one. No, no, don't you <laughs> This Hugo culture is my favorite right now. I shouldn't say that. The other ones, I don't know what you're jealous. But so polyculture, what you can see here is see this is a strawberry. Okay. And these little ones are ground cover. And if you were to dig in here that we're going to grow up this very arch here. There's another sort of pea that's going to cover it. There's strawberries as a ground cover. There's um, clover as a ground cover. And then we have other things like some carrots in here, some beets, cabbage, parsley. So what you do is you take all of your seeds that you want to grow in your Hugo culture and you just shift it out. See how it's just like growing everywhere? There's no rows, it's just thrown in here. What we're trying to do is mimic nature. So if you were to go walk in that forest and look down on the ground, you would see lots of layers. Yay, babies! Look at, look at these babies. So when you move the mulch and all of the layers over, it's gonna look like a forest floor and break down like a forest floor and give the nutrients back to the soil. cultures have a different polyculture. So this one I call the pea, pea guild. The one behind you over there with the rocks, that's a melon guild. The trellis, that weird frame there, is for lupas to grow up. Um, this is a miniature hugo culture guild, and this is for corn. Here in the bare dirt, we're having a poppy area. There's going to be lots of poppies right here growing. Where you can kind of see this line. He wants to know if you want to be part of the corn. Yes, please. Out of the corn. Um, this guild right now is just clover. And as you can see, it is really just clover. Um, and the reason why we haven't really
really planted too much in this yet is because of over here. I will take you. So these trees are pawpaw trees and you can see they're coming in real good. We were a little bit worried about them because we had some frost, but they're happy. Um, this area back here is going to have a lot of shade because of these trees. So this guild is going to mimic a forest already. Whereas that stuff's going to take a long time to mimic a forest. We're putting forest related stuff here now. So pawpaws and there's going to be forest flowers and forest and stuff. <laughs> what you're walking on right here is a trench that Adam dug to collect the water that's running off from the neighbor's houses. And we needed to collect it because we don't know if they're using pesticides or any chemicals on their lawn. So we want to catch it. We're going to be growing plants inside of it like day lilies, ditch lilies that are going to filter the water and then send it back into our property. This one is kind of like that one. Um, it's planted with clover. But I planted that one first, and then a couple days later I planted this one. So if you look real close, we're right on target with the clover. And uh, clover is really important to yards and gardens. For one, because it's a nitrous um, bringer-upper. It helps put nitrous back into the soil so it'll keep living. And then also, clover really is a big food for bees. And the more bees you have in your yard, the better. You guys might already know this though. And if you do, I'm sorry. He's <laughs> videotaping. <laughs> this thing here is our compost pile. And so again, when the water hits the compost pile and the worms and then the chicken um, droppings and stuff, it's going to filter through. The water then becomes compost tea and starts traveling into our garden. So lots of stuff is happening in this garden that you can't really see. And I will take you this way. Watch out for him. Okay, so this, this is the beginning of a swale. Um, so the difference between a swale and a trench. A swale, the water is going to come in to this ditch and it's going to collect and then if you see this mound, we don't want this water going this way. We want this water to soak into the ground and create an underwater water table so that everything is hydrated but not flooding the human creatures. So they're still getting water, but as you can see, they're still getting water. Um, following this around. So with permaculture, the number one thing you want to do is watch how your yard reacts to the environment naturally. This is natural. This is what happened even with this trench in place. The water is still coming and it's still collecting. So the land wants us to create a pond environment here to collect the water. When it gets really hot, it's going to evaporate. When it evaporates, it falls back onto your property and stays where it is rather than running down, running into the creeks, and flooding someone else's earth. So that's what's happening there. These trees, these trees are not fruit producing, are not nut producing, and are pretty much really pretty wasted space. So right here, this is called a heart nut tree. And it's really important to know that if you ever decide to do these sequel cultures, which I really suggest you do in the future, um, don't put your trees on top. Because what happens is their roots are going to go really deep and they're going to hit that pocket of logs we talked about. And trees don't like air pockets. So you have to plant them on the side. When this guy gets bigger, this guy's going to be down. So it's kind of a decoy. And it's also kind of a decoy for deer. As you can see, maybe there's no deer. That was Adam. There's no deer bite marks or anything on this tree. So it's kind of deflecting so the deer won't eat our food. So that's that. This Hugo culture is going to be a tomato guild. And if you walk in, you'll kind of see. I can kind of tell the difference between
Like, what, why, why are we doing this? Okay, so that's a really good question. Yeah, the reason why we're doing this is because this year we are watering a lot. Right. And it's raining a lot and that's good. The water is soaking yeah. into the lot. Yeah. Next year we will maybe water once or twice the whole entire year. The next year we won't water at all. Because the more the logs break down inside of there, it's producing moisture and compost and heat. So essentially, the first year is a lot of work. trees, whatever, if you were hungry, you would just walk out there and, and pick your food. You, you wouldn't be wanting So that's kind of what we're wanting to do. This Hugo culture, because it's two feet in the ground as well, this will last 30 years. And then they say 30 to 100, but I think this will last 100 years. I don't know. I mean, it'll keep wearing down, wearing down. And become completely organic matter, especially when you're chopping your, say, tomato seasons over, all the tomatoes are dead. You just chop it down and let it decay. You just chop whatever parsley you don't use, whatever you don't use, and let it decay. And it becomes more organic matter, more organic matter. Limbs break, you throw them on here, more organic matter. Leaves in your yard, you throw it on here, more organic matter. This is not ever going to die. It's, it's a forever structure at this point. Forever, I mean, it was a hum, forever human. For as long as, you know, my, my words are confusing now. But, I hope that answered your question. Okay. So, what else to show you? I think that that pretty much sums it up. Do you guys have any questions? Is this a research project or are you just wanting to do this? Yeah, we've been... Oh my gosh, that's a good question. So, for about four years now, we have been trying every permaculture, sustainable, strange gardening method that you can come up with. And this is a combination of everything that we have tried. So, we've never done this on a whole, but this is a mixture of permaculture, polyculture, Hugo culture, garden back to back to Eden gardening, which is gardening inside of mulch, which is this bed here. Um, this is the children's garden or children's area, and this whole thing that's logged off has sweet potatoes, it has flowers, it has a different biodiversity in here. And the the method between back to Eden gardening is growing straight in mulch that you don't need compost that you don't need fertilizer, you don't need anything, you need mulch and inoculate. So, kind of a mushroom inoculate, which there already is because that mulch is breaking down. So, we've combined everything. And yeah, it is an experiment. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. We're also combining guilds. I think I told you about that. But like an apple guild is um, one of the most famous guilds, apple guild. Um, and the theory is, is if you have the seven layers of a food forest in one guild, your your garden is not going to be attacked by insects and animals. So, <laughs> so so far the apple guild only has the onions and chives, and that's pretty much to keep the deer from eating it while it's a baby right now. But soon it's going to have bulbs to keep out weeds. It's going to have comfrey, and comfrey, when you chop it down, brings nutrients to the ground. I mean, it goes on and on. And on. Yeah, no, it's forever. And, and what you're looking at is just like the outline. Because, like, where you're standing, there's going to be fig trees. So, when you're walking down this path next year, there's going to be fig trees, there's going to be strawberries covering the Hugo cultures because they're perennial. They'll just keep growing and growing and growing. Um, there's blueberries and they're going to keep spreading. There's going to be raspberries and they're going to keep spreading. So putting a lot of perennial plants in that are just going to keep growing forever. 
this place is going to be really full. That's why we really needed a path. Otherwise, we would be able to walk through here. And that's awesome. Yay. And I'm really glad you guys came because all this was done today, really. The whole groundwork. I mean, Brandon knows we put this outline here, but they put the gravel in and covered this all this with mulch and compost, filled this all in, planted sweet potatoes. This pile of mulch here was like four feet, three or four feet tall. It's almost gone. What's putting it in? So, do you have any questions? Oh, plenty. I'll get to them later. Okay.